Hi, I'm here with Bill Roper, who is executive producer of Champions Online. Uh, it's the new upcoming MMO done by Cryptic Studios, which is based off the Champions Online pen and paper game. Yeah, right? Champions actually uh, is a paper and pencil RPG that's been around since 81. Uh, so it's, it's great. It's got a, about 27 years, 28 years now of history built up, gameplay mechanics, a uh, world that's been built that's really rich and been vetted through hundreds of thousands of players over the years. Yeah, I know. I was at the press conference yesterday. The creator himself of Champions Online is now part of your team, so it can't get any more thorough than that. Yeah, it's actually fantastic to work with the Champions guys. I mean, they're still uh, working on, you know, they're still the, the game still exists out there for players, right? A tabletop game. Um, and right now there's a lot of back and forth between us and the paper and pencil guys. Um, so as we build things for the game, we talk to them about that, how that's going to integrate both directions. Um, they're working on the sixth edition of the rule set right now. Um, things that we build in the game will be reflected in that. Um, things that they've been talking about there, we try to put into the game as well. So for players that are fans of the original franchise uh, in that paper and pencil setting, you know, we want them to come in and say, wow, this feels exactly like what I remember, you know, when I was a kid growing up and playing it or people that play it now. So why play Champions Online? It's a superhero MMO and, you know, there's City of Heroes that's already out that you guys have done and now is NCSoft. There's DC Universe Online coming out. I mean, there's a lot of superhero-based things are starting to get very popular in terms of the MMO right. crowd. It's not so much hack and slash, dungeon crawling anymore. What's going to make Champions Online stand out more? I think there's a couple things. Uh, probably the biggest one is just the absolute customization that you can have in the game. Um, I think with, with the City of Games, uh, you saw the, the, the kind of the front first edge of that, right, with the, with the costume creator. Uh, but still, you were then following kind of a track on your powers and what you did past that. Um, with Champions Online, uh, not only do you get to completely customize and choose all the elements of your costume and colors and all those things, um, but you do the same types of things with your powers. That's a really big deal. That was that was a huge part of, uh, I think, what made the paper and pencil game so appealing and so unique when it first came into existence in the 80s, um, was the fact that... <laughs> it's okay. We can't do anything about it. It's Let's all right. Continue. That is why we are at Comic-Con, so people can walk in front of the camera. It's the yes. best part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, really, I think the thing that, that makes it so unique uh, in terms of, like, in comparison to other games, Champions Online draws from that paper and pencil setting, um, where you could make any power, any hero you could think of. That's our goal with the game, that complete customization. So I can go into the powers menu, and if I want to, it can be very easy. I can take a theme, uh, ice for example, and I can make a hero that stays kind of in the ice theme. I can choose all the powers that are thematic to ice, and I can have a really cool hero at the end when I'm done. But if I'm more of a, someone likes to get in the you know, nuts and bolts and really dig in and make exactly this very specific character I have in my head, I can go ahead, open up the whole power system, um, and, and really, like, I will say, like, every power in the game laid out in front of me and say, oh, I want to use this and choose that, you know, pick these different elements of it, and really build that hero that I want. Um, then I can further customize that uh, by actually choosing, uh, depending on what the power is, emanation points and, and hue for the, the power. So, for example, um, if I had uh, an energy bolt that maybe is normally red and comes out of my, my hand on my character, I could say, yeah, but I, I'm kind of building a big powered armor guy. And on the costume I'm building, I've got this giant chest cannon. Well, that's really cool. So I want to actually set the, that area uh, as the emanation point. But, you know, he's kind of like a black and orange looking thing, you know, in my color design. And so I'm going to have his powers be orange. So then I can actually change the, the color of that as well. So now, as opposed to firing that energy beam uh, out of my hand, I'm firing it out of my chest. Uh, it has a different color. So even though um, initially I, it may be the same power as someone else has, it looks and feels very different. And then as the game progresses, I can do further customizations by adding different advantages to my powers. So really just the amount that you can get in um, as much or as little as you want to make exactly the hero that you see in your head, I think that's a, a huge, huge thing that we have in the game. So at the get-go, you're not going to be able to play as villains. You're just going to be heroes. Right. Um, but you do get to make your own villain. Make your own arch villain. I saw that right. at the press conference yesterday, and I thought that was a pretty cool idea. So you're going to basically, is it going to be when you make your hero at the beginning of the game, or you're going to get a specific quest, and then you're going to go back and make your arch villain who is going to be someone you face in a set of quests? or? Yeah, actually the way the uh, Nemesis system works is uh, uh, after you've made your, your hero and played for a while, 
um, and then you've kind of established your reputation within the world and those types of things, um, then you'll have the opportunity to go in and identify your nemesis. Um, and basically that puts you back into a character creator um, that's designed for the nemesis system where, again, you're completely choosing the look of your villain, you're uh, choosing his power themes, you're picking his minions, you're um, figuring out you know, what, what his, his motivations are. So you're choosing a lot of parameters um, for your nemesis. And then what you do with that uh, is he goes into his own storyline that becomes now part of your character's story and what your character goes through. Uh, I think the thing that's really cool about that is that you can always invite people to help you on your nemesis missions. So you can get a team to go fight your nemesis and his minions. Um, and then you kind of show off, right, your creation. Like, oh, check it out, this is my idea, this is my idea for my, my, my villain and what he looks like and his powers and how it works with the, you know, and you can really show that off. And it's, it's that first step for us um, in having user-generated content be available. We like the idea of giving players tools, letting them customize things, and then share that with other people. So the nemesis system, I think, is a, is a great foray into that, being able to allow people to continue not only in the character they make, but the enemies they want to fight, to, to be part of that creative process. I mean, my first thought when I heard that nemesis system was like almost end game content, because you figure, what would be bigger for a hero than the final battle with their arch nemesis? I mean, would it be something like that, or would you, do you, I guess, have specific in-game content already kind of planned? Um, like? it, it, that, there is in-game content planned, but that is a part of it. The Nemesis is definitely a part of in-game content. I think that, you know, that's, that's kind of what you see if you think about all the classic comic stories, that there's heroes that, you know, as they go through and they mature and become more powerful and more skilled, kind of... You know, they, it always starts by their fighting kind of lower level guys, or there's a street gang they break up, and then after a while, certain villains in the world take notice of them until they kind of build up, uh, you know, this this gallery of, of you know well known villains that becomes their, you know, who they fight against, and then who you see as recurring characters, you know, uh, over the decades with with that comic, right? So the same idea here, we want you to be able to to have you know, this creation that you've made that then becomes a part of your kind of ongoing story through the life of your character um, and, and it's a big part of that end game. So, you guys are currently beta testing it and when's it looking to come out? Uh, we are in beta now. We want people to come over and beta test with us. We're trying to get people to come register at champions-online.com. Uh, get registered, jump in the beta, and we're coming out uh, spring of 09. So, right, so right around long, the corner. Not too long at all. Um, any other plans for the future though? expansions, uh, waiting as the pen and paper game changes to do things, or individual uh, issues, kind of like City of Heroes? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're still formulating exactly the strategy on how we'll release content. Obviously, the great thing about an MMO is that you keep getting to work on the game, right? You keep kind of with great ideas, um, getting them in the queue, getting them out to players. Um, you know, right now, we're really focused on finishing what we have, but usually about a month or two before the game comes out, um, programmers are the ones that are working on it, and your artists and designers are kind of done. The content's locked down for them. Um, and so then we can roll them on to the ideas. We've, we're having meetings. There's a lot of emails flying back and forth right now on what we want to do moving into uh, you know, the first six to 12 months after the game launches. Uh, we're thinking of it at very from a, a much of a story standpoint, like what's the, what's the big story we want to tell? How's How do we fold content evolve? in there? How the world evolves, right? Because that's a big component of I think of the comic genre, right, is those stories that get told. Yeah, it's awesome powers, it's, it's you know, superheroes, but at the same time, there's, there's a story that always happens that drives that along. So we want to make sure that as we're delivering new ideas, you know, new gameplay, new content to players, that it, it's, it's thematic when it comes out. So there's that connectivity to it and that excitement about waiting for it. Well, I mean, it sounds cool. I like superheroes. I signed up for beta, so I'm open to get in, and awesome. then... I just want to be there and see it happen. So I hope you guys have a good success with it and hope to see it soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks.